This is the reverse osmosis system and DI recirculation loop that is used for many applications such as laboratory, precision manufacturing, and testing. This system will be used to generate approximately three to five gallons per minute of RO product water, which will then be stored in a polyethylene storage tank, which will then be recirculated through a mix bed column, which is a hybrid mix of cat and anion resins that will deionize the water to the water quality that's required for this application. The general goal of this video is just to walk you through the installation steps along with some general operating parameters for the system. Overall, most of the documentation that will be provided with the system will allow you to go through that and allow you to then get a better understanding of the individual pieces of equipment and the true operating parameters relative to flows pressures, uh, water quality, and just general maintenance on each of the components. So I'm going to start by actually taking you through the installation portion of the system, which is broken into electrical and plumbing. And we'll start with plumbing. The main water inlet will come in through this black solenoid valve. So you'll be required to plumb up a uh, half inch, three quarter inch, or one inch line. The flow rate should be approximately 10 gallons per minute at a minimum feed pressure of about 30 PSI. The water will come in, feed a pre-filter, feed a carbon filter. The pre-filter is for suspended, uh, suspended solids removal. The carbon is to remove residual or uh, chlorine and organics. Then what will happen is the water will come in here. A ball valve is here for isolation to change the filters here and here. The water will then come here. This first is a, a conductivity cell, TDSL, that will give you the total dissolved solids reading of the incoming water, as well as the concentrate research, which we'll talk about in a little bit. This will be your combined water quality feeding the RO feed pump and then feeding the membranes. The RO feed pump has, will take the positive water pressure and boost it to the, re to the required pressures to feed the RO system. The RO system is what they call a 2-2 array in that the water is fed off. This is the suction. This is the discharge. It will come up through a throttling valve. A pressure switch is located right here, PS101, for low pressure control. Then what we'll do is we come up and into these first two filter housings. Each one of these housings has a 4-inch diameter by 40-inch long reverse osmosis membrane. So we go into the first two. The flow goes right to left, if you're looking at it this way. We'll then come out this way of the discharge and come up into the upper two bank of membranes. It will then be fed to back from right to left, or in this case with the video here, left to right, coming out on the discharge side. And I will do a walk around uh, with the video camera after so you can see some of the specific points of this. But there are there is a T that comes off the discharge line. There are two tubes. One tube is the concentrate recirc, which is this polyethylene hose that will be sent right back to the feed side of the system. This allows you to run to certain higher recoveries with the reverse osmosis system. The second one is a uh, tube that is considered the concentrate. That hose, or the smaller hose, the 3 8 OD hose, is connected to the uh, inlet, the reverse, uh, reverse osmosis concentrate flow meter. This will all be pre-plumbed, so you won't have to worry about these hoses, but just so you have an idea of what, is, what the two are doing. The small one is the concentrate recirc. The, uh, the larger 7 8 hose is the concentrate recycle. This concentrate flow meter has a discharge on it. The discharge flow meter has a hose right now. You'll probably have to adapt to this in some way, shape, or form to probably hard pipe when you have it in the field. This is the concentrate outlet that will need to be sent to a drain, uh, a common drain. This is not has water, so it's not as if it needs to meet a compliance limit for any sort of heavy metals. So typically the outlet side, the discharge side of the concentrate flow meter the water that comes out of that simply goes to drain. There is another flow meter, which is the product water flow meter. All of the water that is filtered through the reverse osmosis system goes from the outside of the membrane to 
to the inside of the membrane. These, this is the center of the tube or the center of the membrane housing where each of the four uh, clean water ports come out into a common header. You can pull a sample here for water quality check or more importantly, identical to this conductivity cell or TDSL is another TDSL right here that will give you the water quality. And then there's a hose here which is the clean water outlet which will then be said to the product water flow meter. The discharge of this product water flow meter, which is another hose that we use for testing, however, you can either use a hose or hard pipe, depending upon what you would like to do in the field, is sent to this polyethylene tank. This is your product water storage tank. This product water storage tank has two level floats in it. We'll talk about the first float, which is the high level float. The high level float allows the reverse osmosis system to shut down on a high level and reactivate once, the, once it reaches a, I don't want to call it a low level, but a RO on level. So essentially you have an RO on level and an RO off level. And that's what the first uh, flow sensor will do, which is the upper flow sensor. We'll talk about the lower flow sensor in a little bit. The concentrate um, recycle, just as a note, also is fed through this flow meter right here. So this line is actually the discharge point of this flow meter. And what we'll do is we typically max this flow meter out right to 5 GPM, more or less. And then we try to run the concentrate flow at about half of, of approximately what this is. And it really is project dependent. So once you get it in the field and you start running it, more likely than not, you'll consult with the factory. And what we'll do is we'll be able to walk you through how to um, set the parameters. There are three pressure gauges on the front side of this system. You have the influent pressure, which is the inlet pressure off the discharge of the pump. So this pressure gauge right here is reading the discharge point of the pump. Then you have the concentrate pressure, which is the concentrate pressure is what the outlet side of the system is doing, which would be all over here as we discussed earlier. This would be on the outlet side of the membranes. And then we have the distribution pressure, which we'll talk about the distribution in just a short while. That is actually on the product water side, which you'll be using for your testing purposes. To really accurately dial in the system, what you'll need to do is use really three valves. You'll use the concentrate back pressure valve, which is this valve, which essentially controls this flow meter. You also have a flow meter dial right on this flow meter, which is flow really contr will control the recycle, the conch recycle. And then you also have a red-handled valve down here, which allows you to put back pressure against the pump. You may have to put a little back pressure against the pump to balance off the flows and pressures on the concentrate and the concentrate recycle. And that's really what the, the three main flow meters will do for you. All of the controls of the reverse osmosis system is run through this controller. There's a detailed manual on what all the set points are here. Everything has been uh, factory tested and it's ready to go. What you'll have to do from an electrical standpoint is bring 220 volts single phase to this control panel. This control panel is run 220 single phase and then everything out to its components are already pre-wired and tested. So for instance, what we have here is a liquid tight conduit that is being fed to each of the two pumps, the reverse osmosis pump and then the distribution pump, which we'll talk about in a little bit. We also have wiring going out to the solenoid valve, and then we also have wiring going out to our pressure switch down below. All that stuff's pre-wired prior to shipment and testing. There's also a 120 volt feed that will be required on this, and that's just a local duplex 120 volt for the ultraviolet disinfection unit. And what that ultraviolet disinfection unit will do for you on the distribution side is cut down on any bacteria that's going to be required, and really help you meet that true specification that's required for testing. And at this point, what we'll do is we'll start talking about the distribution in the next video segment.